Nicholas Rorick. Published January the 19th, 2018. Further information can be found at the end of this recording. Nicholas Rorick. October the 9th, 1874, December the 13th, 1947. Known also as Nikolai Konstantinovich Rarik, was a Russian painter, writer, archaeologist, theosophist, perceived by some in Russia as an enlightener, philosopher, and public figure, who in his youth was influenced by a movement in Russian society around the spiritual. He was interested in hypnosis and other spiritual practices and his paintings are said to have hypnotic expression. Born in St. Petersburg, Russia, to a well-to-do notary public father of Baltic German ancestry and a Russian mother, he lived in various places around the world until his death in Naga, Himachal Pradesh, India. Trained as an artist and a lawyer, his main interests were literature, philosophy, archaeology, and especially art. Rorick was a dedicated activist for the cause of preserving art and architecture during times of war. He earned several nominations for the Nobel Peace Prize long list. The so-called Rorick Pact was signed into law by the United States and most nations of the Pan-American Union in April 1935. Part 1 – Biography Part 1 – Biography Chapter 1 – Early Life Raised in late 19th century St. Petersburg, Rorick matriculated simultaneously at St. Petersburg University and the Imperial Academy of Arts during 1893. He received the title of artist in 1897 and a degree in law the next year. He found early employment with the Imperial Society for the Encouragement of the Arts, whose school he directed from 1906 to 1917. Despite early tensions with the group, he became a member of Sergei Agheilov's World of Art Society. He was president of the society from 1910 to 1916. Artistically, he became known as his generation's most talented painter of Russia's ancient past, a topic that was compatible with his lifelong interest in archaeology. He also succeeded as a stage designer, achieving his greatest fame as one of the designers for Diaghilev's Ballet's Reds. His best known designs were for Brodin's Prince Igor, 1909 and later productions, and costumes and set for The Rite of Spring, 1913, composed by Igor Stravinsky. Another of Raw Eric's passions was architecture. His acclaimed publication, Architectural Studies, 1904 to 1905. The dozens of paintings he completed of fortresses, monasteries, churches, and other monuments during two long trips through Russia inspired his decades-long career as an activist on behalf of artistic and architectural preservation. He also designed religious art for places of worship throughout Russia and Ukraine, most notably the Queen of Heaven fresco for the Church of the Holy Spirit which the Patronus Maria Tenesheva built near Hatolishki no estate and the stained glass windows for the Darts and Guns during 1913 to 1915. During the first decade of the 1900s and in the early 1910s, Rorick, largely due to the influence of his wife Helena, developed an interest in Eastern religions, as well as alternative to Christianity. Belief systems such as Theosophy, both raw Eriks became avid readers of the Vedantist essays of Ramakrishna and Vivekananda, the poetry of Rabindranath Tagore, and the Bhagavad Gita. The raw Eriks commitment to occult mysticism increased steadily. It was especially intense during World War I and the Russian revolutions of 1917, to which the couple, like many Russian intellectuals, accorded apocalyptic significance. The influence of Theosophy, Vedanta, Buddhism, and other mystical topics can be detected not only in many of his paintings, but in the many short stories and poems Rorick wrote before and after the 1917 revolutions, including the Flowers of Moya cycle, begun in 1907 and completed in 1921. Part 1 – Biography 
Chapter 2, Revolution, Emigration, and the United States. After the February Revolution of 1917 and the end of the Tsarist regime, Rorik, a political moderate who valued Russia's cultural heritage more than ideology and party politics, had an active part in artistic politics. With Maxim Gorky and Alexander Benoit, he participated with the so-called Gorky Commission and its successor organization, the Arts Union. SDI Both attempted to gain the attention of the Provisional Government and Petrograd Soviet on the need to form a coherent cultural policy and, most urgently, protect art and architecture from destruction and vandalism. At the same time, however, illness forced Rorik to leave the capital and reside in Karelia, the district bordering Finland. He had already quit the presidency of the World of Art Society, and he now quit the directorship of the School of the Imperial Society for the Encouragement of the Arts. After the October Revolution and the acquisition of power of Lenin's Bolshevik Party, Rorik became increasingly discouraged about Russia's political future. During early 1918, he, Helena, and their two sons George and Svetoslav emigrated to Finland. Two unresolved historical debates are associated with Raw Eric's departure. First, it is often claimed that Rorik was a major candidate to direct a people's commissariat of culture. The Soviet equivalent of a Ministry of Culture which the Bolsheviks considered establishing during 1917-1918, but that he refused to accept the job. In fact, Benoit was the most likely choice to direct any such commissariat. It seems that Rorik was a preferred choice to manage its Department of Artistic Education. The topic is rendered moot by the fact that the Soviets elected not to establish such a commissariat. Second, when he wished to reconcile with the USSR, Rorik maintained later that he had not left Soviet Russia deliberately, but that he and his family, living in Karelia. There he painted a series of pictures under the name Karelian Suite. Had been isolated from their homeland when civil war began in Finland. However, Raw Eric's extreme hostility to the Bolshevik regime, prompted not so much by a dislike of communism as by his revulsion at Lenin's ruthlessness and his fear that Bolshevism would result in the destruction of Russia's artistic and architectural heritage was amply documented. He illustrated Leonid and Ryev's anti-communist polemic S.O.S. and had a widely published pamphlet, Violators of Art. 1918-1919 Rorik believed that the triumph of Russian culture would come about through a new appreciation of ancient myth and legend. After some months in Finland and Scandinavia, the raw Eriks relocated to London, arriving in mid-1919. Engrossed with theosophical mysticism, the raw Eriks now had millenarian expectations that a new age was imminent, and they wished to travel to India as soon as possible. They joined the English-Welsh chapter of the Theosophical Society. It was in London, in March 1920, that the Raw Eriks founded their own school of mysticism, Agni Yoga, which they referred to also as the System of Living Ethics. To and passage to India, Rorik worked as a stage designer for Thomas Beecham's Covent Garden Theatre, but the enterprise ended unsuccessfully in 1920 and the artist never received full payment for his work. Among the notable people Rorik befriended while in England were the famed British Buddhist Christmas Humphreys, philosopher author H. G. Wells, and the poet and Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore, whose grandniece Devi Karani would later marry Raw Eric's son Svetoslav. Later, a successful exhibition resulted in an invitation from a director at the Art Institute of Chicago, offering to arrange for Raw Eric's art to tour the United States. During the autumn of 1920, the Raw Eric's traveled to America by sea. The Raw Eric's remained in the United States from October 1920 until May 1923. A large exhibition of Raw Eric's art organized partly by U.S. impresario Christian Brinton and partly by the Chicago Art Institute, began in New York in December 1920 and toured the country, to San Francisco and back, 
During 1921 and early 1922, Rorick befriended acclaimed soprano Mary Gardner of the Chicago Opera and received a commission to design a 1922 production of Rimsky Korsakov's The Snow Maiden for her. During the exhibition, the raw Eric spent significant amounts of time in Chicago, New Mexico, and California. They settled in New York City, which became the base of their many American operations. The raw Eric's initiated several institutions during these years. Gore Ardens and Corona Mundi, both of which were meant to unite artists around the globe in the cause of civic activism, the Master Institute of United Arts, an art school with an exceptionally versatile curriculum, and the eventual home of the first Nicholas Rorick Museum, and an American Agni Yoga Society. They also joined various theosophical societies, and their activities with these groups dominated their lives. Part 1, Biography. Chapter 3, Asian Expedition. 1925 to 1929. After leaving New York, the Raw Eriks, together with their son George and six friends, began the five year long Raw Asian Expedition that, in Raw Eriks' own words, started from Sikkim through Punjab, Kashmir, Ladakh, the Karakaram Mountains, Khotan, Kashgar, Kara Shah, Yomchi, Urtish, the Altai Mountains, the Oirat region of Mongolia, the Central Gobi, Kansu, Tatum, and Tibet, with a detour through Siberia to Moscow in 1926. Raw Eric's Asian expedition attracted attention from the foreign services and intelligence agencies of the USSR, the United States, Great Britain, and Japan. In fact, Prior to this expedition, Rorik himself solicited help of Soviet government and Bolshevik secret police to assist him in his expedition, promising in return to monitor British activities in the area, but received only a lukewarm response from Mishl Abramovich Trillis, chief of the Soviet foreign intelligence at that time. On the one hand, the Bolsheviks assisted him with logistics when Rorik was traveling through Siberia and Mongolia. Yet, on the other hand, they refused to totally commit themselves to his reckless utopian project of the sacred union of the East, a spiritual utopia that boiled down to raw Eric's ambitious attempts to stir the Buddhist masses of Inner Asia to create a highly spiritual cooperative commonwealth under the patronage of Bolshevik Russia. The official mission of this expedition, as Rorik put it, was to act as the embassy of Western Buddhism to Tibet. However, for Western media his expedition was presented as an artistic and scientific enterprise. Between the summer of 1927 and June 1928 the expedition was thought to be lost, since communication with them ceased for a year. They had been attacked in Tibet and only the superiority of our firearms prevented bloodshed. In spite of our having Tibet passports, the expedition was forcibly stopped by Tibetan authorities. The expedition was detained by the government for five months, and forced to live in tents in sub-zero conditions and to subsist on meager rations. Five men of the expedition died during this time. In March 1928 they were allowed to leave Tibet, and trekked south to settle in India, where they founded a research center, the Himalayan Research Institute. In 1929 Nicholas Rorick was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize by the University of Paris. He received two more nominations in 1932 and 1935. His concern for peace resulted in his creation of the Pax Cultura, the Red Cross of Art and Culture. His work for this cause also resulted in the United States and the 20 other nations of the Pan-American Union signing the Rorick Pact on April the 15th. 1935 at the White House. The Rorick Pact is an early international instrument protecting cultural property. Part 1, Biography. Chapter 4, Manchurian Expedition. In 1934-1935, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, then headed by Rorick Admirer Henry A. Wallace, Sponsored an expedition by Rorick and U.S. dear scientists H.G. Macmillan and James F. Stevens to Inner Mongolia, Manchuria, and China. 
The expedition's purpose was to collect seeds of plants which prevent the destruction of benign layers of soil. The expedition consisted of two parts. In 1934, they explored the Greater Kingan Mountains and Bargan Plateau in Western Manchuria. In 1935, they explored parts of Inner Mongolia, the Gobi Desert, Ordos Desert, and Helen Mountains. The expedition found almost 300 species of xerophytes, collected herbs, conducted archaeological studies, and found antique manuscripts of great scientific importance. Part 1 Biography Chapter 5 Later Life and World War II Rorik was in India during the Second World War, where he painted Russian epic heroic and saintly themes, including Alexander Nevsky, The Fight of Mstislav and Redidia, and Boris and Glub. In 1942, Rorik received Juahalal Nehru at his house in Kulu and Nehru's daughter, Indira Gandhi. Citation needed. Together they discussed the fate of the New World. We spoke about Indian Russian Cultural Association, Rorik wrote, It is time to think about useful and creative cooperation. Gandhi would later recall about several days spent together with Raw Eric's family. That was a memorable visit to a surprising and gifted family where each member was a remarkable figure in himself, with a well-defined range of interests. Rorik himself stays in my memory. He was a man with extensive knowledge and enormous experience, a man with a big heart, deeply influenced by all that he observed. During the visit, Ideas and thoughts about closer cooperation between India and USSR were expressed. Now, after India wins independence, they have got its own real implementation. Clarification needed. And as you know, there are friendly and mutually understanding relationships today between both our countries. In 1942, the American Russian Cultural Association, the RCA, was created in New York. Its active participants were Ernest Hemingway, Rockwell Kent, Charlie Chaplin, Emil Cooper, Serge Kusivitsky, and Valery Ivanovich Dereshchenko. The association's activity was welcomed by scientists like Robert Millikan and Arthur Compton. Warwick died on December 13, 1947. Part 2. Cultural Legacy Vice President of the United States Henry A. Wallace was a frequent correspondent and sometime advocate of Nicholas Raw Eric's teachings. Wallace became attracted to the idea of sacred union of the East, a spiritual and geopolitical utopia Nicholas and Helena Rorick contemplated to establish in the heart of Asia. Based on spiritual ideas, which the Raw Erics claimed they received from other world masters, this utopia was to show the humankind a blueprint of ideal society. As the U.S. Secretary of Agriculture, Wallace became so much interested in the whole project that he decided to sponsor the second Rorick expedition to Asia in 1933 to 1934. In the meantime, Helena Rorick was corresponding with U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who was intrigued by her fiery letters. The whole project ended in a disaster and resulted in energetic efforts by Wallace and FDR to cut their ties with the Raw Erics. The whole incident later partially resurfaced and became controversial when Wallace campaigned for president in 1948 and portions of the correspondence were printed by columnist Westbrook Pegler, becoming known as the Guru Letters. Presently, the Nicholas Rorick Museum in New York City is a major institution for Raw Eric's artistic work. Numerous Rorick societies continue to promote his theosophical teachings worldwide. His paintings can be seen in several museums including the Rorick Department of the State Museum of Oriental Arts in Moscow, the Rorick Museum at the International Center of the Raw Eric's in Moscow, the Russian State Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia a collection in the Tretyakov Gallery in Moscow, a collection in the Art Museum in Novosibirsk, Russia, an important collection in the National Gallery for Foreign Art in Sofia, Bulgaria, a collection in the Art Museum in Nizhny Novgorod, Russia, National Museum of Serbia, the Rorik Hall Estate in Naga, India, 
the Sri Chitra Art Gallery, Tiruvunan Tupuram, India, in various art museums in India, and a selection featuring several of his larger works in the Latvian National Museum of Art. Raw Eric's biography and his controversial expeditions to Tibet and Manchuria have been examined recently by a number of authors, including to Russians, Vladimir Osov and Alexander Andreev, American. Andres Nemensky and the German Ernst von Waldenfors. H.P. Lovecraft refers numerous times to the strange and disturbing paintings of Nicholas Rorick in his Antarctic horror story, At the Mountains of Madness. The minor planet 4426 Rorick in the solar system was named in honor of Rorick. In June 2013 during Russian Art Week in London, Raw Eric's Madonna Labris sold at auction at Bondham's shop for £7,881,250 Inc. by as premium, making it the most valuable painting ever sold at a Russian art auction. Special characters in this article were substituted with audio cues. They were denoted as follows. And left and right parentheses three consecutive periods. This recording is a derivative work from Wikipedia. For more information, to commission recordings like this, and to support the developer, please visit www.patreon.com slash frogcast.